Okay, I promised you part two on the hypothyroid, and here it is. So if you haven't watched part one yet, go to drpompa.com, D-R-P-O-M-P-A.com. Click on my little YouTube insignia, and you'll be able to watch that in its entirety. And please do. Although they stand apart, it definitely will help you to watch both. And definitely pass them on to your friends, because hypothyroid is a growing epidemic. As a matter of fact... It is the number one undiagnosed um, condition on the planet Earth, meaning that there is 27 million people walking around with hypothyroid, and 50% of that 27 million people go undiagnosed. And you know what? They have many unexplainable symptoms. And I got a lot of questions about certain symptoms at the seminars I've been doing. I want to give you four symptoms that many people aren't associating with hypothyroid that usually are. Number one is constipation. Number two is hot flashes. And number three is mood disorders. And number four, infertility. All of these can be linked to hypothyroid. There's so many other symptoms. Obviously, cold intolerance, losing hair, seeing hair in your drain, the one-third of the eyebrows um, starting to get diminished. These are all hypothyroid. You know what? And most people have those symptoms, and yet their blood work is normal. So they go years, 20 to 30 years, with certain symptoms, even sudden weight gain, and yet they can't pinpoint the thyroid because they go to their doctor. The, daughter, the doctor looks at the golden standard, their TSH, and he says that you're fine. But I'm giving you, and I talked about last time on the video, three reasons why you have symptoms and have normal blood work. In the last part one, in the last video, we talked about autoimmune conditions, and we talked about not being able to convert T4 to T3. This time, we're going to talk about number three. But I want to review. So I want to bring you back to the fact is, what is autoimmune condition? That means that your body literally can be, ta its own immune system can be attacking its own thyroid. When that happens, you will have normal blood work most often, and yet you still don't feel well. And unfortunately, the very treatment that doctors give, typically it's T4 hormone, does not work, or put it this way, it does not relieve the symptoms. So your blood work actually gets better. And the doctor says, hey, I've done you good. Your TSH is normal. However, look, there is not one research, not one research study showing that normal TH actually has anything to do with healthy thyroid function. So it doesn't make a difference. You know, in the old days, they actually looked at symptoms and they said, you know, gosh, doc, I'm not feeling well. Could you adjust my medication? And yet now we only use the gold standard, the TSH. That's a bad idea. Okay, so why don't doctors run autoimmune or the, at least the blood work for autoimmune to see if you even are autoimmune? Because obviously the treatment for me is completely different. So I want to see that blood work. The reason why is because their treatment is the same, T4 hormone. However, my treatment is very different because I want to make sure we correct that blood work, you know, and we support that blood work. Once we get your body to stop attacking itself, then guess what? We can go on to a different treatment. But until that happens, we cannot. And look, right now there's a lot of debate on whether you use iodine for treating thyroid or not. There's one group that says, you absolutely don't use iodine, especially when the body's in an autoimmune state. There's another group that says you can't fix a thyroid condition without using iodine. Well, I'm here to tell you that both sides are right. I agree. You can't never, you can never use iodine to support the thyroid um, in an autoimmune state. It would definitely make you worse. However, I am here to say that you are never going to be able to treat the thyroid correctly if you don't use iodine. Um, so we have to know that blood work. We have to know if you are in an autoimmune state. And then we can use very specific detox to support that until we get that blood work to change. So that's very, very important. Okay, number two, and I want to remind you of this, not the, the, the conversion between T4 and T3. If you remember from the last video, we talked about T4 is being the stored hormone. It needs to be converted into the T3, which is the active hormone that tells your DNA exactly what to do. Then you can think clear, you have energy, you feel good. Now, the problem is, is there's three reasons why that someone would make that conversion. Number one, that conversion happens in the liver. So you can actually have a liver problem, not necessarily a problem with the thyroid. Again, your blood work looks normal, 
because it's not making the conversion. So your doctor will look at it and say, hey, you're okay. But meanwhile, it's not converting it into the active T3 that makes you feel good. Number, uh, number two reason is, and I talked about this on the last video, part one, is that stress. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of bring you back to that in a minute. But the third reason is selenium. If you don't have enough selenium, and we run that blood work in our clinic, because if your selenium is too low, you won't make the conversion. Matter of fact, when we see low selenium under 135 on blood, we know that that's a good clue that you're not able to make that conversion. And once again, your blood work would look normal. So, okay, with that said, let me bring you to this as a reminder. Uh, in part one, I talked about T4 and how it has to convert to T3, and then the T3 has to attach to these receptors. See, so T3 attaches to the cell. This is a cell. You always see me drawing these cells. It attaches to these really important receptors, and then the receptor says, okay, come on in, and then it talks to DNA, and you feel good and have energy. Uh, you don't have the sudden weight gain and all that stuff that when it doesn't get in. Now, here's what happens. In times of stress, T4 will be converted to something called reverse T3 or RT3. There's a reason for that. Because in times of stress, your body wants to conserve energy, and it doesn't want the T3 to get in there. However, in acute stress, it goes back to normal, and it starts converting to T3 again. But under chronic stress, it can continue to con uh, bring the T4 into reverse T3. Now, you have to understand what reverse T3's job is. It attaches. It's very similar to T3. It's the reverse. It attaches to these receptors that T3 is meant to attach to. And in doing so, it blocks the receptor so the T3 can't get in. So therefore, it conserves the energy. But the problem is this, and I talked about this on part one. Once this stress becomes chronic, it could be emotional, it could be toxic stress, now it starts to shunt all of it to the RT3 and it does that continually. So now the T3 that you need to feel good is not happening. You're stuck in this mode. The reverse T3 is blocking that receptor. So that conversion is not made. Okay, so I think you understand that. But now let's go to the third um, reason why you can have normal blood work and still not feel well and have all these symptoms that are just unexplainable. And the third one is a T3 receptor problem. If you recall in some of my videos, I always say this, look, all hormone problems, they're not problems with hormones necessarily, but they're problems with the receptors. So let's go to back to that. They're problems with these receptors. So there's the cell. These are the receptors that speak to the hormones. Now the one that you see me talk a lot about is insulin. Insulin's job as a hormone is to allow glucose in the cell. So once again, you feel good and you feel normal. So think about type 2 diabetics. They have plenty of insulin. However, they can't get the glucose in the cell, but it's not because they lack insulin like a type 1 diabetic. It's because these hormone receptors are being blunted or blocked, and now the glucose can't get in the cell where you need it. Okay, so the same thing can happen to any hormone receptor, whether it's estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, most hormone problems, or leptin, that's the hormone that tells your brain to burn fat for energy. When these hormone receptors are not working or they're blunted, you can't hear, the cell cannot hear the message. Look, the key is, always, I say it over and over again, you have to fix the cell. Hormone problems, you have to fix the cell membrane where the receptors to the hormones are. That's how we get these conditions. Well, look, you know, it's not rocket science. If you fix the membrane, guess what? It has an effect on the hormones themselves. So that's what you have to do. But look, for this case, these T3 receptors, the same thing. These can get blunted because of inflammation of the cellular membrane. What are the three things I always say drive inflammation the most? Number one, toxins. Toxins blunt these receptors. So yeah, if you have toxins, when I'm treating a thyroid case, the toxic top five for thyroid, write these down at home, very important. Number one, PCB and dioxins. Where are you getting these? Contaminated fish, meat, and dairy. Very important to eat organic, very important to eat grass-fed. Watch my upcoming videos on that. So dioxins, PCBs, block these receptors, big problem. Even block them on the thyroid. Number two, pesticides. Growing number of studies showing pesticides and thyroid conditions. We've got, again, another argument to eat organic if you have a thyroid condition. Number three, heavy metals. 
I talked in the first video about mercury. Mercury binds to these receptors, even the receptors on the thyroid themselves, because they are called selenium receptors. Mercury binds to that, and it even can drive your body to attack it because your body thinks of that as a foreign um, protein in the body when it looks at that selenium mercury, and it can happen with lead as well. So again, heavy metals, big problem. Fourth, BPA. That's from plastics, number one source. The plastic linings in cans, um, sealants, on fill, uh, sealants on kids' teeth, not a good idea. And also, ladies, cosmetics, big source of BPA, which can cause thyroid. So again, thyroid condition, we want to remove these major toxic sources. And last but not least, things, toxins called halogens, chlorine, bromine, fluoride. You better get some water filtration.